Fluids 9. My question is about the Bernoulli equation in general. I'm having a difficult time with those questions. What should, one, what should be the units of pressure? What should they be? All the problems give the pressure in PSIG. How do you know what way the sign should be for the elevation change? Is it positive when state two is higher and negative when state three is lower? So let's take those one at a time. What should the units of pressure be? The units of pressure um, can be PSI or they can be feet, um, depending on what version of the Bernoulli equation you're using. So in one version, you have everything in pressure units. Um, and in the other, everything's been converted to feet. So you're using length units to communicate pressures. And I think as you go through the example problems, you're going to see examples of both. But I think what your question is actually driving at here is you mentioned PSIG. So I think you're kind of asking, should it be PSIA or PSIG? To which I say, doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So if you're using PSIG anywhere, then you better use it everywhere. And the opposite is true as well. If you're going to use PSIA, then you use PSIA everywhere. So you just have to be consistent. So you get to choose. In fact, if you're going to use PSI versus feet, you get to choose. But whatever you do, you should be consistent. Otherwise, it won't work. And um, ultimately, you want to align with the answer. So if the answer is going to be given in feet, you may want to work in feet to just make your life easier. If you choose to work in PSI, you'll have to do a conversion step at the end. Um, so there's no right or wrong answer as long as you're consistent and ultimately aligned with your answer choice at the end. <clears throat> Second question about the elevation change, when is it positive and when is it uh, negative? You also choose that. So um, let's just draw a little picture. I, there's so many different types of Bernoulli equations, but I'll just make a super simple example where kind of have like a couple of reservoirs and maybe they're separated by some amount of piping. And then there's another reservoir down here at a lower elevation. There could be a pump in between or not. That's not really the point. But um, you're interested in comparing the pressure between the two sides. And you're going to write the Bernoulli equation on the left and right. Maybe something like P1 over gamma plus V1 squared over 2G plus the elevation. And on the right side, P2 over gamma, same thing with twos. V2 squared over 2G plus Z2 plus any losses, right? Add that to the second side. So this is our first side and this is our second side. So just as it relates to the elevation term, specifically Z1 and Z2, it all depends on where you set your datum. So let's give you a choice. If you set your datum somewhere in the middle between the two water lines, then over here, you're going to have a positive Z of whatever the distance is between that horizontal datum and the top of the water line. And on this side, you're going to have a negative by that delta. On the other hand, maybe you don't put the line there. Maybe you put the line somewhere a little bit more convenient so that one of your Zs can be zero. So maybe I put it exactly even with that water line. So then this guy has a Z of zero. And the second one has some negative Z. And of course, lastly, for completeness, you could set it at the second line. So now this one gets to be zero and this one gets to be some positive number. Z1 would be positive, whatever that number is. So those are your choices. And those aren't the only three choices. Of course, you could set it anywhere. You could set it way down here or way up here. There's no rules as long as you're consistent. So for your sanity, you may want to choose a location that's going to simplify the problem and not add complexity. Hopefully that answers it. Another, I'm just, tr I'm trying to guess what might maybe be behind this question. And the only other thing I can think of is that you're using a version of the Bernoulli equation where everything's already been brought over to one side. So you're, you know, you have like head added by the pump is equal to all of these differences. And you have some term in there that's like Z1 minus Z2. And you're trying to rationalize why this should come out to be positive or negative. And um, the way to think about that is not to, <laughs> is to come back to this original version and draw your datum and have one of these be positive and one be negative or one be zero and one be some other number. And uh, then 
because this version, this initial version, all the intuition lives in here. It's all the pressures on the left equals all the pressures on the right plus the losses. As soon as, soon as you start subtracting things over, um, you haven't done anything wrong. You've done a legitimate algebraic process uh, to arrive at an accurate statement. Um, but now all the intuition has been buried in these differences and it may be hard to tease that back out again. So uh, yeah, just be careful once you go down that path because now you're just, you're trusting your algebra from, from that there on forward. And also with a general question like this, you know, just keep doing fluids problems. This is, this stuff is hard and um, it gets easier. So just stick with it and you, you'll get through it.